So I was doing a Google search the other day and I came across this picture from Tumblr with Honey Bunny and Lola Bunny on it. Apparently the person behind the Tumblr made this picture in response to critics not being very fond of Honey. There is a reason you hardly ever get any notes on here, because no one gives a shit about Honey Bunny. She's a lame character who needs to die off. Honey Bunny has got to be the ugliest, more boring bitch I ever saw, and you think she's a Lola Bunny? Fucking crazy. What the hell is wrong with you? Seriously, what the hell is wrong with you? And then at the top we got Honey Bunny and Lola Bunny hurling insults back at the critics. Honestly, I never realized there's so many idiots in the world until I started using the internet. Fuck them honey, they are all nothing else than just stupid no lives, don't care what they say. I don't think fucking them is a good idea, but if they get pregnant and reproduce themselves? Laugh out loud! Mm. Apparently this was the poster's poor attempt at making a joke. When in reality, this is actually the type of shit that makes you constipated. Not only is this whole picture unnecessarily dramatic, but from the critics right up to the poster, can all afford some lessons on how to form a complete sentence. Actually, seeing that Tumblr post actually renewed my interest in actually discussing Honey Bunny. And in case you didn't know, even though I feel everybody should know this, this is basic cartoon knowledge, Honey Bunny was the original love interest of Bugs Bunny. And as I discuss her now, she actually just had her 50th birthday a few years ago back in 2016. Her official debut was in the Looney Tune comics in 1966. Her origin, however, is just a little bit older. The original Honey debuted in 1953, and she was a small white rabbit. This version of Honey ended up being a prototype to the Honey we would get a decade later. Back then, she wasn't a love interest yet. She was a traveling companion and Bugs' cousin. Before I go any further, let me be clear. Honey Bunny was the original girlfriend to Bugs Bunny, not the original fling. There were other girls before her and there was quite a bit more after she debuted. People tend to take Bugs for granted because he cross-dresses a lot. Make no mistake about it, in his 80 years he has been nothing short of a womanizer. And trust me, I will be getting to quite a few of those in a second. When I think of Honey Bunny, I think of it's a prime example of what happens when somebody gets a hold of something who has no vision. The best way I can describe her is, in 1966 she was this nice fancy car just cruising down the highway. Then around 1980 the car decided to pick up a hijacker. The hijacker takes control of the wheel, runs the car off the road, and straight off the damn cliff. If you haven't seen this chart before, it's called All the Faces of Honey Bunny. It's really easy to Google search. Honey Bunny from left to right. She starts out as fine, then towards the center it starts to become okay, then towards the end you start asking yourself what the hell the problem is! Somewhere along the way somebody thought it was a good idea to make her look like a female Bugs Bunny. And then you probably say to yourself, why would they do that? Probably because they could get away with it at the time. Nobody was probably thinking about how lazy her design was becoming. To the supporters that grew up with her she probably just looked like another Minnie Mouse to Mickey except Minnie grew into her own. I feel as though I can defend many female characters with enough good supporting material. I can defend who Honey was, but in her later years, there's no point trying. The artist or artists put no effort into it, so why should you? The last 16 years of her life was basically nothing but a cash grab. That being said, I try to make this a point as often as possible nowadays, because people have gotten so dumb that they don't know where to draw the line between fiction and reality. Jessica Rabbit's famous quote was, I'm not bad, I'm just drawn that way. And it's too bad Jessica isn't around too much anymore in order to remind people of that. It is never a fictional character's fault for how they turn out. A fictional character cannot be anything beyond what the artist wants them to be. That being said, when things are going in a bad direction, everything deserves criticism. And that criticism extends to the 1980s Honey Bunny, who could have easily looked like Binky Bunny. You don't know who Binky Bunny is? Okay, Binky Bunny was from the Looney Tunes spinoff Tiny Toon Adventures. She was a one-time character who made her debut in 1992 during episode 13 something. Binky Bunny was not a Buster Bunny with eyelashes. She was an original character whose whole role was less than a minute. Just putting these two together tells you everything you need to know about the 1980s Honey. Fighting in the left corner, standing at about 2 foot 5 with high heels. A gorgeous purple bunny who was a throwaway character and took more effort than Honey in her last 16 years. Binky Bunny! And fighting in the right corner, Bugs Bunny with eyelashes and a pussy! Honey! <laughs> 
FUNNY! Now the thing to remember about Honey is, she spent one half of her better years as a comic book character. The other half was selling merchandise. That's the kicker about Honey Bunny. She has never appeared in any Looney Tune cartoon shorts. And while she was sticking to mainly comics and merchandise, on screen however, we ended up with a handful of cases of other female rabbits fulfilling the role she was created for. The one in the top left corner is called Daisy Lou. She didn't look all that great herself. In fact, she somehow... Strangely enough, ends up looking even less attractive than the 1980s Honey Bunny. How the hell does that happen? Along the way also, we have ended up with cases of two other yellow rabbits. At no point is it ever declared that these two are Honey Bunny. In fact, the one on the top right was Witch Hazel, and the one on the bottom was a nameless rabbit. Oh yes, let me go ahead and just save you all the trouble because I know the joke is coming. Yes, I know the one on the bottom left is EXTRA THICK! But you wanna know who by far is the funniest love interest Bugs has ever had? Go ahead and take a guess, your time is up! It was Penelope Pussycat. That was Peppy Le Pew's girl! Yeah, Cara Blanca was only a parody, but it's still a fascinating choice I would really love to know the reasoning behind. Either way, life went on. From the 1980s right up to the mid-90s, Honey continued to be the leading lady in Bugs' life. She appeared beside him on the pinball game called Bugs Bunny's Birthday Ball. Along the way, she even managed to move up in the world when she became the damsel in distress for the Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle video games. There were four Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle games in total. Honey played the role of biggest prize Bugs had to rescue for the first two. Jordan, Bugs, Bunny, special delivery! Together, they just might save the world. Space Jam, you've never seen anything like it. November 15th, get ready to jam. In 1994, the movie that will forever rearrange the face of the Looney Tunes franchise, Space Jam, was under construction. When the creators decided that they wanted some type of love interest for Bugs to chase, one of the first characters to fall in their lap was Honey Bunny. Animation's best! Daisy Lou? Lola Bunny? Or just Bugs and Drags? It was at this point, looking like her better half finally caught up to her. Say what you will about Space Jam because it was anything but perfect. But in my opinion, one of the best choices it made was denying Honey the opportunity to make it on the big screen. Imagine if Honey was given the green light the way she was presented. Nostalgia Critic would have had something so much more sharper to say besides Bunny Boobies. Honey Bunny found herself being tossed away and the animators began working on a new female rabbit. Yes. Don't ever call me. Doll. Although Honey Bunny didn't make it into Space Jam herself, she still played an important role in it. Inspiration was taken from her classic 1966 design and created who we now know today as Lola Bunny. Being rejected from Space Jam, however, didn't stop Honey Bunny. She had at least another good two years as the poster girl. But after late 1996, things began to change. Her old comfy position as Bugs Bunny's girlfriend soon transferred to a more hipper, sexier rabbit, which was Lola, who was now enjoying her new overnight popularity. After a while, it was now her who was now starring in all the video games, and it was her whose face was now on all the comics. Somewhere around the early 2000s, Honey was ultimately phased out for good. Now even though the character of Honey has long since been retired, I do feel I speak for a certain group out there when I say, a long-awaited fight between Honey Bunny and Lola Bunny is kinda long overdue. And this is the part where I say they missed a big opportunity with 2011's The Looney Tunes Show. It almost seems not many people try to give this show a chance, but in all honesty, this was one of the more refreshing shows Cartoon Network had running at the time. And before it abruptly ended itself, it still had a lot of potential it did not tap into. It even could have been a redemption for Honey. Not saying that she needed to come back permanently, but a cameo would have been nice. Either way, I'm going to say this last part so this doesn't turn into a part 2 video. Now, technically, Lola Bunny is Honey Bunny. That's by inspiration. I know there are still some hard-pressed Honey fans out there that take that statement and run with it in order to try to keep Honey alive. Me, on the other hand, no. I treat them as two separate entities. This is now the part where Jawbreaker ruins everybody's fun. One way, shape, form, or another, everything was inspired by something. That doesn't automatically mean the new creation is the same as the previous. If we went by that logic, technically, the 1966 Honey Bunny was inspired by another Honey Bunny in 1953, who, once again, was Bugs' cousin. So, by that logic, Bugs has been fucking his cousin for 16 years. So, that means if Lola is Honey, that means Bugs has 
still been fucking his cousin for number 20. Damn it, job factor. Why you gotta ruin my childhood? <laughs> but that's not how it works, now does it? Oswald the Lucky Rabbit's girlfriend, Hortensia the Cat, predates Minnie Mouse by a year. Hortensia became the inspiration for Minnie Mouse. Yet, you don't hear any conversations about Minnie still being Hortensia. The way I see it is, Lola was still honey during her Space Jam period when she was still living in her shadow and everybody was expecting her to fail. Lola, however, did make it out of Space Jam and has long since surpassed Honey. That's why I don't treat the two as the same. Lola has her own legacy, just as Honey Bunny had hers. Thank you for tuning in to Gone with the Fur Theater here on Play First Cinema. If you liked today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for future videos. My name is Jawbreaker, and I thank you for watching Play First Cinema.